Stokesia. So Stokes theorem is uh, basically taking Green's theorem and lifting it up into three-dimensional space. So I asked you to explain that on a problem, um, but my sense is that a, a bunch of people are still a bit not so not so solid on that. So so recall Green's theorem. Green's theorem says that if you're in the xy plane and you have some sort of a blob here, let's call it R, and then you have a curve C that is the oriented boundary curve of R oriented counterclockwise, then and you have some vector field F that's like flowing around, <coughs> flowing along here. Um, great, there's F. Then it tells you that um, if you want the vector line integral over C of F dot DS, so, okay, what is this? That means the circulation around here, how much the vector field is helping you or hurting you as you go around this counterclockwise. If you prefer, you can calculate the double integral of, well, qx minus py dA over the region enclosed inside. Um, and so this is in the case that f is pq0. And I encourage you to think about this as like a curl. Because what this really is, is the double integral over R of the curl of F dot the vector 0, 0, 1 dA. Because if we computed, if F was PQ0 and we computed the curl, you're just pulling out the last component. So it's like dotting it with 0, 0, 1. So the, the intuition that we had for that was that if we broke this up into lots of little pieces, which I'll draw not so small. Okay, so the right hand side says compute the curl at each point. So at each point inside, you compute the curl. So if you compute the curl here, it says how much the thing is, whether the thing is, if it's positive, the thing is going counterclockwise. If it's negative, the thing is going clockwise. And if it's zero, the thing isn't rotating. Okay, so suppose that the curl at this point comes out positive. Well, instead, I could make a vector, a very tiny vector line in a row going counterclockwise around that point, and I could see if it came out positive or negative. I hope you can see that if, if the curl is basically counterclockwise, a vector line in a row around this thing is going to come out positive, and vice versa. So the idea is you could compute the curl at each point inside, or you could compute the vector line in a row around each box. But maybe you can see that if you did around each little box inside, from like these, these two cancel out because they're equal and in opposite directions. And all you're left with is the, the bits around the outside. So that ends up with just the circulation around the outside. So that was the intuition behind Green's theorem. I know I've told you this before, but now here's the 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 dimension bolding the 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 the, the, the bubble blowing part. You take this picture and lift it up into three dimensions. You know, um, Flatland, there's like a creature who lives in two dimensions, and someone's like, you should come into three dimensions. And he's like, what's three dimensions? And they're like, just up and out, up and out. So you imagine that this, this, this thing that has only ever lived in two-dimensional space suddenly comes up and out, and then you blow into it. So we, um, we can have a picture in three space. Maybe I'll make the boundary like orange or something. So there's our oriented boundary curve. And in three space, this thing is like, there's an oriented boundary curve going around. And then here's the surface coming out. And so if you were to break up, do these little squares everywhere, well, you can do the same thing here. You can break this up into little squares, like, like, a, like a mesh bag, sort of, every little, all the little squares. And Stokes theorem which we don't have a color for Stokes' theorem, but we'll make it blue. Stokes' theorem says if you have this oriented boundary curve C and you orient your surface S going out, then the vector line integral over C of F dot D little s is equal to the surface integral over S of the curl of F dot D s. And the idea here 
is that these are like exactly the same. This is this part is exactly the same, and these are actually exactly the same as long as you think of um, like that each little bit of area here in the plane is actually a little bit of area with a normal vector going up in the z direction. And that's why, that's what this 0, 0, 1 vector is doing. It's orienting it up. And so those vectors, they come out. Let me blow it out. Yeah. Sorry, the S on the right-hand side of the like, lower equation, that's like the surface, right? That's the surface. So yep, oriented surface S. So like when you like pick the bounds, pick the bounds such that you're like integrating over like the three-dimensional surface, not the 2D flat. <laughs> that's, so that's right. So we're integrating over the surface. Um, when you parameterize it, you might have to. You might end up integrating over some region down here. But morally, you're integrating over the surface. Okay. Okay. So this is telling you how. This is re relating single integrals to double integrals, and then Stokes theorem. Nope. That was Stokes' theorem. Uh, Gauss's theorem, also known as the divergence theorem, um, goes, goes up a dimension. So it relates the double integral over a surface of f dot ds to the triple integral of divergence of f dv. OK, and now instead of calling this a surface, actually, I'm going to say this is a solid chunk of stuff e, and this surface is the boundary of e. So you can imagine that you have some solid thing, like, like a rock, maybe. So I'm telling you that this is E. So this is a solid thing, E. And the surface is the boundary of E. So, so E is a solid. And, and boundary of E is like all the, part of, all the parts of E that you can touch is the surface. Um, and so again, we imagine that you have some vector field flowing in space. So here's, here's might be my vector field, F. Uh, this, let's see, this has like hypotheses. So um, for a solid E with boundary, boundary of E, um, boundary, boundary of E, it has to be oriented out. And F, a continuous vector field with continuous derivatives in E, then we have this. So there are some hypotheses on the theorem. OK, so let's talk about what these things are measuring. So let's look at the left side. So you have this vector field F, and it's flowing through your surface. So this is called a flux interval, uh, integral. We are measuring the flux. So we're basically measuring the net amount that's coming out because we're oriented out. So for this example, we have some little vectors going in and some big vectors going out, so the flux would be positive. So the net amount is out. OK. This on the right hand says, well, you could just, instead of doing that, doing the flux on the boundary surface, you could measure the divergence at each point inside. So remember, we thought about the divergence as measuring like how much stuff is created or destroyed at each point. So I hope it kind of makes sense that if you measure how much is created or destroyed at every point inside, that the net is like a, how much is emitted from the outside of the thing. So that's kind of the intuition um, about that. Um, and uh, this, is, this is going from a single integral to a double integral, where here's the vec original vector field f on the single integral, and then here is like a derivative on the double integral. So this is a, an analogous to the fundamental theorem of calculus. It's a generalization of it. If you integrate the derivative, you get the, if you double integrate the derivative, you get the original function. And then over here, this is also a derivative. Divergence is like px plus qy plus rz. So you're taking the derivative of everything. You do a triple integral of the derivative. It's the same as a double integral of the original. So they're all, um, these are all, these are both um, higher dimensional analogs or versions of the fundamental theorem of calculus. One of which we already saw, we saw the fundamental theorem of line integrals was like a was from dimension zero to dimension one. This was from dimension one to dimension two, and this was dimension two to dimension three. So we're covering it. That's as far up as we're going. 
question? Yeah. Um, so if our explanation of, of Green's theorem is that you're sort of summing the curl over the area and then for every Stokes theorem over the surface or whatever, where is the like dotting it with the normal vector come into play here? Like why do we do that when we're just trying to sum it over the region, if that makes sense? So why do we dot the like, I sort of get that it wouldn't really make that much sense. Like, according to that equation, right, you have to dot it with the, the, the vector, and it wouldn't really make that much sense if you weren't doing that. But I guess I just mean, like, how does that relate to the explanation where we have, like, sort of summing the, the curls over the region? Um, so you're, when you take the dot product of the curl vector with the surface, you're measuring how much this vec the curl vector is pointing in the same direction as the normal vector to the surface. So that's saying, like, how much the vector field is rotating in the plane of the surface. Because if, if it's zero, uh, then it yep. means it's rotating. Your surface is here, and it's sort of rotating like that. And then, what? Then the net flux through this. Then what? Well, then it's not really rotating much at all, actually, in your surface. Right? It's just rotating perpendicular to your surface. So it should be coming up to zero. And also, if you put a boundary in here, then it'll okay. be rotating perpendicular to your boundary as well. Yeah. Um, can you just talk really briefly about how like, flux relates to these two things? Because I think it's like what it's, flux is just essentially surface area. Yeah, so flux is a word. So flux is a word for the number that you get when you compute a vector surface integral. Okay. So this this right here, this is like flux of the vector field curl F over S. And this one is the flux of the vector field F over the surface boundary P. So flux is just a word that we use to talk about this. It comes from physics, because you have you imagine you have an electric field going through a surface, and the amount of electric field is known as flux. For solids. Yep. If you want to go down a dimension, go. What are you thinking? I don't know. I just want. To... Yeah. Yep. It's only for solids. And if you want to go down a dimension, there's like different analogs of the fundamental theorem. So, but isn't going down a dimension just doing the slopes theorem? Yep. So, why is curl the like dimension, two dimensional analog for divergence? Well, curl isn't really a two dimensional analog for divergence. The metaphor of having uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus in every dimension is breaking down a little bit. But um, the, I, the idea was that it's a, you go up a dimension in your integral and then and you take a derivative. Here you go up a dimension in your integral and you take a derivative, even though they're not the same derivative. Sorry. It would be nice if the metaphor were just perfect, but it's not. Question. Sorry, so if you wanted to find, like, um, if you, you, instead of using Stokes' theorem, you could use, like, Gauss's theorem instead, if, like, the surface was, like, closed and bounded, right? If, if your surface is closed, then you can use Gauss's theorem. Yeah. So if your surface is, so if your if your surface is closed, then you and you want to compute the flux of f over it, then you pretty much have to use Gauss's theorem. Um, if you if your surface is not closed, well, you'd like to use Stokes theorem, but Stokes theorem you can only integrate a curl vector field. So if you were given some vector field f and you wanted to apply Stokes theorem to like take it off of the surface and put it onto the boundary, you'd have to find the vector field F whose curl your vector field is. It's sort of like an antiderivative, and that sounds challenging. You could do it, but it sounds challenging. All right, all right, well, go for it.